evening. Good evening. Good evening. Please be quiet. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. We have a quorum at 7 o'clock. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Rick Venus. My name is Henry Cropsey and I have with me... Just Brent. speak louder. Sure. Yeah, please. Henry Cropsey, Brent Venus, of Ideal Movers and Storage, just to uh, introduce myself. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Ideal Movers and Storage Group. Uh, we are a group of uh, people who have been working on the Ideal Movers and Storage Correct. Right. 
is 99.78 per acre. So 116. So you need uh, 58 times 99.78. Um, because you only because you only get 2,000 right, so feet. Right. So okay. There's a system. So, TDR is 9,978. 9,978 per acre for TDR. Each TJ or TDR gives you 2,000 square feet per acre. Okay, good. That's my question. Okay, so then. Um, 2,000. So, then I guess my next question would be um, just to make sure I got this straight. So, we this would, I believe, trigger site plan approval special permit because of the new construction of the building. Correct. Okay. Um, and that's per section 8.2. Um, that has a, a couple of, I believe, discretionary issues for the planning board. I'm just trying to get a sense of how these might be handled. Um, one of them is it, it talks about a traffic statement. That's easily way. Okay, because that's what I was thinking of. Because in our instance here, because um, it's a, a security code, every customer gets their own key code and they enter it to get in the, and we uh, even drive into the property to enter their code. So they lock in the times they locked out. So we have a history of traffic. And Rather than the traffic study, what we really, what we really would like to see is you're going to be open, I don't know, let's just what say. Of operation? What are your hours of operation mm -hmm. and approximately how many cars in, in, uh, an hour? During, during the course of those, like I'm sure, I'm sure some hours are busier than others. So right. let's say you're opening to buy, your busy times or just, just speaking, eleven or two. Well, okay. just give us a rough track of count during the eight hours you're open. Okay. Well, that's easy enough because, like I say, we have we have the information, which is great. And then um, there's something called a trip reduction plan. Yeah. So obviously, that's yeah. that for that for some some something more like a mall or a big complex is going to have a lot of traffic, a lot of need for parking, and you're not going to have that. Okay. And then I guess the, my next question is, um, uh, it's also a special permit issue pursuant to 17.8 per the TDR provisions. Is that different from the special permit issue per the site plan? Yes. Two different, two, two different special permits. Two different actually, special actually, if you apply, you go for site plan approval. Right, first. Business use and aquifer, mm -hmm. um, erosion to sediment control, and if you decide to go for the TDR, who needed that, that would be a fourth special permit. And then um, one of the other questions, again, on a technical basis is in, in the TDR section, it talks about um, one of the things the planning board can consider is requiring all roofs to be peaked roofs, and talking about Bill, I guess, there's a question about what exactly constitutes a peak roof. And That's in the village overlay district. You're not in the village overlay good. district. Good, I was think, been thinking would apply. So it, that right. particular section doesn't apply to you. Good, okay. Um, if I could ask uh, Bill to come up for a second. Yeah. So, can I just jump in here? Uh, the reduction in parking is not open ended. You still have to maintain, uh, you can only reduce it down to a minimum of 1.5 times the floor area. Okay. So take a look through section 17. There's a chart in there. And uh, you also have to maintain the 20% open space. Right, we have that. So, but, it, but we can only reduce it down to 1.5 times the floor area. So we just have to run the numbers to see if you can make that work for you. Okay. And then, uh, Bill, do you have any additional questions? No. If I figure this thing, do we need them? Who did they pay for it? That's what they're saying. Yeah. The equivalent of 50. The equivalent of 58 acres of PDR. 10,000 roughly an acre. Yes. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Let me sell it.
Thank you, gentlemen. I'm from the Salic, representing 373 River Drive. At the last planning board, you requested that I show you some activity from the last two years, and I have the paperwork. I did find the board. Okay. So, do I just show it to you, or? Subdivision 22 Breckenridge Road. 
that's I, I was here. Chumway is the guy's name who bought the property. It's right. It's right on the top of Breckenridge. I talked to you guys about right. it a year or so ago. Right. Okay. So it was. We could put four lots in there with a legitimate road. We're going to put two lots in with a private road. There are nine copies of the plan, two sets of mailing labels, and two form seats. You're going right with the defense of the Yes. Yes. Uh, let's see. The first date we have will be September 18th. So, let's see. You can do it. August. We've got two, we've August, we have, oh wait, 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 oh wait a minute. July, we have a continuation. July, we have a continuation. And the easy ride on the 17th. I have a feeling we're going to be continuing. I'd rather not. Okay. Are you, are you going to, are you going to hurry on this? I don't really know. Yeah, obviously this is a better one if you guys quote your quote. This is, this, this is. Shumway. So for the 18th? Yes. It's two lots. It's two lots, and then the rest of it is. Oh, two lots. Yeah. yeah. Two lots. Okay. The rest of it's going to be. And, then, on the, and the address is what? Twenty-two Brackenridge. Right. Twenty-two Brackenridge. Right. That's actually the address subdivision. Yes. Is that echo first? Yes. Yeah. Brackenridge. Right. Yeah, it's on the top of the hill, right on the top of the hill, so uh, the water's going to go down to the Mount Warner well for sure. Yeah, the, the test comes up to that water actually flow in the opposite direction. Yeah. We're going to treat it like it's in the opposite direction. West Street, owned by one Frank Drosdell. This is just a copy of the tax map. I have not done any work on this. I'm here to ask a question or two. So, there are three buildings on this highlighted piece of property. Right? House, barn, and I don't know if that's a barn or considered a warehouse. The guy who owns V1 Vodka, Paul Gossip, Gossip. Gossip, is renting space there. Yes. And he wants to buy it. Okay. So, Mr. Drosdell is willing to sell the barn or the warehouse, whatever it's called, but he doesn't have enough frontage to create a separate lot. So my question to you guys is, is it possible to cut this out of here, create a right-of-way to it, as long as I can make what's left around here comply with the 150-foot 
the box and, and all that stuff, or is this you just can't a total? You're only got 129 feet in front, you don't have enough room for the box. Well, the box, we got a pre existing lot. You're, you're pre existing grandfather, no question about right. that. Right. For what? For, but if, for agriculture. So this would be. I, would, I can't get the 150 foot wide, I know that, but I can get the 150 foot deep. And if, it, if I was gonna sell this back piece off, we would, we've done that in the past, where we've cut the back off and just make sure that what's remaining complies with zoning. That's how we treat all the, the pre-existing non-conformings that we've dealt with well, before. What is this gonna be, a business? It's just storage, John. Storage for what? I don't know what I, agricultural use. Is that what this storage was used for? Yeah, I, I don't know what he keeps in there. I don't know anything about making vodka, so I don't know if it's agricultural or what. Well, vodka is not agricultural. But that's it. Is. <laughs> so I don't see any way you can make a, a second I, that you could subdivide this parcel without either approval not required or full subdivision. And I don't think you have the setbacks to do a full subdivision. No, I don't. No, I, I was just curious to know if we could just cut the cut the barn out and with a right of way to it, but because I'm not sure how that's classified. If is it because it's not a house and I'm not being funny here, I'm not being serious. If it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. I'm not trying to make something happen that can't. I just want to know if it's possible. But Randy, if he's buying to store the liquor there, that's a business. You can't have this bread that you want to go to. Yeah, again, I don't know what he's storing in there, John, but I, I hear what you're saying. Well, I don't he's not a farmer. Yeah, okay. all right, well, I'll, I can ask him and we can take it up again at the next meeting, but I felt <coughs> that it wasn't going to fly. Yeah, we don't think so. Okay, that's fine. That is, Violet. now I know, and I can tell. That's it? No, one more. Eight Middle Street. This is just for discussion purposes. This is what used to be the Tolper property. <coughs> Middle. It's it right. It no longer runs through. You have yeah, the historic area. It's right where North Lane would. If you come up North Lane from the dump and you go across Middle Street, you're going to yeah. be in this oh, property. Okay. okay. So. People that own it are trying to do some financial planning, I guess we'll call it. And so they asked me to come up with a subdivision, maximize the lots, and we have an issue in that the bylaw, I believe, still says we can go 500 feet on a cul-de-sac, but I'm, I know that the, the board has allowed it to go to a thousand or Ten lots, but that's with the lots on both sides of the road. So I need to understand what my limits would be on something like this, so I can advise my client accordingly. That's the existing barn. Yes, that's gonna that would have to go. I mean, obviously, and, and that one would have to go. That one would probably stay. Existing as far as that setback goes, but I don't know what their plan is. Just three barns that could come down. Just, just at least two. Who would well, have what's to? one sitting right in the road? Yeah, know? that one would have to go well, for what sure. About this one in in between that one would have to go. And what's this? That's a barn, but that could stay. If it's on that side yard setbacks, that should be able to stay. Well, but anyhow, my biggest concern is length of road. What what are my limits going to be? I would say. I wouldn't see any more than five lots, including the front as well. Including the front? Yep. Why? Because we typically allow ten lots. Ten lots, five lots deep. This is one, two, three, four, five. Even if it's existing, we still can. I understand. So how long is the road? It's about 1,400 is the whole length, so it's about 1,300 feet. There's no way of them utilizing the entire lot. Okay. Not unless they could run it all the way through. They can't. They sold off the East Street end years ago. Mm -hmm. It did go all the way through, but 
they weren't well, looking, that's, they weren't yeah, that's kind the of the future. reason for doing it. The fact you don't have another egress, uh, yeah. so yeah. we wanted to limit this. I thought that block used to go over and come all the way to East Street. Yeah, it did. All right, that's so why you, I said East Street. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the consensus is five lots? Five lots, yeah. That's the system of work. Okay, all right. That's all I need to hear. Thank you. Are we in public notice that appears in the Gazette? The Abbey Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, June 19, 2018, beginning at 7.15 p.m. in the Hopkins Academy Cafeteria. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application for a proposed new Hadley Library and Senior Center for special permits, site plan approval, business use and aquifer, and erosion and sediment control. Said special permits are for two proposed new buildings at 56 Middle Street holding approximately 24,200 square feet. Application and plan may be viewed in the town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, June 4 and 11. And just a few pre-reading here. According to the Mass General Laws, the chairman of a meeting may set rules for the particular meeting. Given that, this chairman will set the following rules for this particular meeting. There are a number of items to address, and I do not see this hearing being concluded in one meeting. So at around 9.15 p.m. tonight, this meeting will be continued to July 17th, 7.15 p.m., same place in this cafeteria. Tonight, we will only discuss zone bylaw items. There will be other items that pertain to this hearing, but tonight we need to get through the zone bylaw items. If you raise other issues, you will be asked to stop and wait until the next hearing. Anyone may speak to an item once recognized by the chair, but please keep it to two minutes or less. Be respectful, please. If you are disrespectful, you will be stopped and not allowed to speak again tonight. And please speak, state your name when you speak. Okay, and address. With that, Mr. Reedy, you going to be the first? I'm going to be the first. I'm going to be the first. Are you cleared by the State Ethics Commission? Do you come in as an attorney for the general public? And now all of a sudden, with the plan, now you come to represent a town entity in front of us. I think you're uncomfortable. Thank you very much, Mr. Chikowski. Uh, for the balance of the board, I'm Tom Brady, an attorney with Bacon Wilson, over in Amherst here on behalf of the town of Patton. To answer your question directly, yes, I've been designated a special municipal employee. So I've been appointed as special municipal council, and then the further designation of special municipal employee does allow me to, uh, it's found to not be a conflict inherent in you that designation. For that. I can show you proof of uh, my appointment. I do not have any, you would like to see, if I could through the chair, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Sure. 
So as I was saying, I'm here on behalf of the town of Hadley um, for the site, at, and I believe the, the address is 46 Middle Street, um, for the approval, hopefully, and hopefully this evening if we can get through it, uh, of the, the two buildings totaling about 24,200 square feet in the aggregate. Um, with me this evening, uh, we've got Phil Palumbo, who's the uh, project manager. We've got Jeff Galarno, the civil engineer. Tim Eagles, the architect. Uh, George Costa, our geotechnical engineer, and I've got uh, Dave Burson from my office as well. Um, and I think it's also important to contextualize that what we're here to do is, as you pointed out, Mr. Chairman, to look at the zoning, to look at the site, the site plan. Uh, understandably, there have been town meeting votes, several of them, to get us to that point. And I think it's important that in order to continue to move these projects or this project at Middle Street forward is to focus on what that site is. Um, and I think as an update uh, to the status of the litigation that I'm sure you're all aware of with the Southeast and the Butters, the American Legion, I'd like to bring up the, the, chairwoman, of the chairwoman of the select board, if I may. To, what? to give you an update on the status of the litigation with the American Legion. Yes, we don't care about the litigation. Okay, so I'm happy. We've been told by town council that is not appropriate for this hearing. Sure. I'm not trying to I'm, I'm just, I'm, no, no, I just I, want to be consistent with what we're told by town council. So then, uh, no disrespect. It, it is disrespectful without taking its stride. So, so we're trying to keep to the zone. I absolutely, understand. and I think part of it is important because uh, you've got a right of way that is done is proposed. There's an existing right of way 30 feet wide from the westerly property line of the American. There has been an allegation of adverse possession or, or a prescriptive easement right over a portion of the property that is seeking development of. Um, I will report, and take it as you may, that there has been an agreement between the American Legion and the Town of Hadley where the American Legion will withdraw their lawsuit. Um, so we don't anticipate that that pending litigation will have any negative impact on this project going forward. And I think, you know, with that, I'll turn it over to Jeff to talk through the site. Um, we're happy to move these boards how you'd like to see them. And then we can probably turn it over to our architect to talk through uh, the elevations and the architectural designs. We've obviously uh, received a letter from Berkshire Design as the peer reviewer. Um, we're happy to talk through that and answer any questions now, during, or at the end. Bring it up. Just don't block the camera. Where the audience? Yeah. Maybe it'd be best if you just kept it down here. <laughs> Maybe way in the end here. Yeah. And you can't put it in front of the camera. No, 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 no. Don't no. block the cameras and don't block us. So you can't so no. directly in front of Just us. move it closer than it was. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Good evening. For the record, my name is Jeff Galarno, project engineer with VHB. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to speak to the design plans for the senior center, um, and then I could uh, point up to the screen here if there's any questions on the connection between the two sites. Uh, the project is the Hadley Senior Center uh, for a 12,000, uh, approximately 12,000 square foot building uh, along Russell Street and Middle Street. We have um, a total site area here of 2.7 acres. If we uh, break up where the limit of work would be for the senior center, I'll point to it right here. This side of the uh, limit of work would be 1.78 acres, and then the remaining would be approximately one acre. We also have on the overall plan, I like to point out, is we have a 30-foot wide easement. Um, 
where we will be using as our utility corridor. Uh, after the utilities have been installed, we will be repairing um, the portion of the Legion parking lot here with bring, uh, new pavement and restriping spaces along the property line. Uh, also on this page at the very bottom is uh, two fire truck routes in, uh, through the site and also a, a bus route through the site showing that they can traverse through the parking field um, in both directions from Middle Street and uh, Russell Street. I can move on from the sheet if there's no questions. Yeah. Keep going. Yep. I get it. You're right that's, that's kicked over 50 feet. Not 30 feet. I can, I can, I can answer that, yes. The actual right-of-way is not moving. The right-of-way is going to continue to be 30 feet from the property line here, moving this way. That's where I'll get to on the utility plan. I'll show that that's where our utility corridor will be. What you're seeing here is just once that's complete, we'll be repairing this portion of the Legion lot with new pavement. Because once we rip up the old pavement, we're going to have to replace it with new pavement. But the actual right of way easement is not going to be relocated. Then how can you show the traffic for a fire out of that 30 foot easement? The, well, I don't know if you want to speak to uh, an agreement. It's not within the easement. All right. Well, let, let him continue. We'll, we'll get to the these questions after because there's a whole okay. slew of questions. Okay. I'll move on. Next sheet here is the uh, demolition plan. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, under existing conditions today, it's a large grass field here with a paved parking lot on this side. Some minor removals of um, some trees, uh, basketball hoop, there was um, a baseball field here, a uh, backstop. Uh, but what you're seeing in dark here, this hatched area, is the existing paved parking area, um, which will um, be removed as part of this project. And that obviously extends in down the right of way for a utility corridor. The next sheet here is our layout materials plan, and this is focused on the senior center alone, different from what you're seeing on the board here. So I'd like to move from uh, this side of the page moving towards this way. The limit of work is set right here. That is the uh, existing edge of pavement area uh, at the back of the existing senior center. Um, and what you'll see is a parking field um, in this area here with a total of 70 parking spaces uh, dedicated to the senior center. Uh, we have a central, and if you want to look at the board too, you can see a colored up area, but it's a central pedestrian greenway connecting the two sites. Um, and what that has is a center green grass area with trees. Uh, and then on either side, we have the concrete um, sidewalks for that connection between the two sites. Um, we have uh, a crosswalk here to, to access the front of the building. The building has several doors um, on either side here where we're showing a concrete sidewalk flush with pavement and for uh, vehicle protection we have bollards along the front area here. Some will... You mentioned there are 70 parking spaces. How many square feet is that? So I, I can look to the, I don't know if that got kicked over a little bit, but if you look up to the board here, um, we have uh, a chart showing uh, parking area summary and open space summary chart. I can move move to that or I can continue. Keep, keep going. Keep, I can keep, don't, 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 don't get to the parking. Okay. Don't get back to all that stuff. <laughs> okay. So we have concrete along the front of the building. There's a small arched landscape area uh, where we have a kind of different color uh, concrete here would be a sitting area uh, at the front of the building. If you move down the uh, lower end of the building, we have five parallel parking spaces with a small retaining wall for some minor grade changes. Um, we do have the continued connection moving um, at the side of the Hadley Senior Center uh, building, um, ADA accessible crosswalk, and then that brings you to the property line at the Legion. Um, we have a loading area at the back of the building here, the dumpster is located here, and then we have some um, structures in the back, transformer, generator, um, which um, 
You can see here, propane on the side. This is a larger view of what we were looking at before on the overall plan, showing where the 30-foot right-of-way is and then just the pavement striping to make the connection for emergency vehicles from our site to Route 9. Could you uh, just mention, what's the plan for deliveries and dumpster? Where are they going to, how are they going to enter? Middle Street. You, the, the access is from uh, middle, uh, middle Street, I'm sorry, this way. So what will happen is they will enter here. This is a one-way circulation. They'll enter here. They'll be able to um, back up to the loading area, and then they can make their way back out the site this way. Same for the dumpster pickup as well. Should I continue? Yes. Yeah. Next is the grading and drainage plan. Under existing conditions, uh, the site is fairly flat, and we try to maintain that for proposed conditions. So um, the grading is pretty similar to what's out there today. Uh, we have, in certain areas of the site, we have storm scepter uh, water quality units to treat the water, which will um, um, collect the parking lot storm water and then convey that to the subsurface infiltration system here. We have the uh, drainage lines here showing connections from the roof of the building and then we have a storm scepter water quality un unit at the back of the site here um, collecting any water um, prior to uh, going over the property line right here. We have some small grading in the back here, which is to some small swales, which would collect any water um, uh, coming this way uh, so they don't impact the, the building. Um, again, getting back down to the leaking site here, once we repave it, we're just showing some grade lines, uh, mimicking the existing grade, grades that are there today. Uh, we, I'll show this on this plan, but the rear of the site, we have a 35-foot wetland no disturbed zone. Uh, under existing conditions, there is a paved area uh, back there, which is within that 35-foot no disturbed. What we plan on doing is removing that uh, impervious material and replacing it with grass, so um, there will be less sheet flow of water, um, untreated stormwater going to um, the wetlands in the back. So we now have grass, which will infiltrate that water rather than sheet flowing towards, towards the wetlands. The uh, subsurface infiltration system is located here. There's two fields on either side of the, uh, the central artery there. Um, and we do have an emergency overflow located here, which will extend, I have an inset here because it was uh, too, too large for the plan, but that will extend out to an existing manhole um, within the grassy area here along the Middle Street tree belt. We have um, um, gone through the peer review process um, and we have made some minor um, comments on that. So we were able to make some tweaks to it and we do not have any water overflow for our site on the 100 year storm. <clears throat> Erosion and sediment control. Um, we're basically showing uh, silt fence and straw bale barrier along the rear of the site protecting the wetlands. Um, we are showing straw wattle erosion control around the rest of the perimeter down here. Uh, each catch basin or water quality unit will have a silt sack um, during construction. Uh, we have uh, a stabilized construction exit, exit right in this location here uh, to prevent any uh, trapping of dirt from from vehicles out onto a paved area down here. Utilities, um, again, you'll see the stormwater on this sheet, but I'd like to point out um, the utility corridor right here. We have uh, a water connection to Russell Street. It's an eight inch line coming to the building. Off of that, we have a T, which will extend and stub out for any future connection on that end. Um, we have uh, oh, um, underground electric and communications from a new pole along Russell Street, which will uh, 
extend through the right of way. Uh, for um, the propane tanks located back here in the generator, but we also have a natural gas line and stubbed out at Russell Street um, should the moratorium be lifted on, on the future natural, the natural gas. We also have sanitary sewer line out of the building here. We're making our connection into the existing manhole uh, that's within that paved parking area at the Legion. The existing sewer line runs along the length of our property line and then through the Legion parking lot here. So we're not making any new, proposing any new manholes. We're using the existing manhole structure there. And again, this shows the overflow connection for stormwater. What storm is that designed for? This, um, the, this underground system is designed for the 100-year storm. I can skip through the details here. <clears throat> Quite a bit of details. We got one more here. This brings us to the planting plan. Um, Again, this is just uh, black and white, but we also have uh, the screen up here, which will show the, um, the green improvement around the perimeter of the site. But we have, um, along this uh, central pedestrian greenway, we are proposing um, uh, tree, six trees, uh, honey locust trees. Uh, we have areas at the end islands with some lower-lying plantings. Um, and then again, along the front of the building, and then we do have this uh, feature, this arched feature in the front of the building, which will encompass a sitting area, um, which it, it, that arch it will be kind of like a elevated um, planter, which will separate the walkway from that pedestrian sitting area. How many people can sit there at once? Uh, I would say about 35. We also have some plantings, shrubberies to uh, act as a buffer from any superficial features, structures um, from any of the uh, adjacent buffers. This, what you're looking at, is just um, the uh, existing condition survey. The last sheet I have here is the photometric plan, lighting plan, which would show. I, I colored these in yellow, um, orange here, just to um, make it easy for you to see. I know there's a lot of numbers on here, um, and what those numbers are are just foot candle levels uh, for the light shedding down from the light fixtures. So um, you can see where the location of these light poles are. They're 15 feet in height. Um, and um, we have uh, extension of the foot candle levels to show that it, uh, the, the levels get lower as you get to the property line where they get to 0, 0.0. What kind of fixtures are you using? Um, I don't have the actual detail of the fixture, but... Uh, we, need, we, we need the detail because I tried looking up your catalog members online okay. and I got lost in their okay. I can, system. I can have him provide that. Uh, our lighting consultant provide those. Yeah. Because the ones that the library shows, the light bulb protrude below the bottom of the shade. Those are unacceptable. Okay. The, light, the lamp needs to be recessed or flush to the bottom because even that glare, side glare from the light, even though there's really no light emitted, the glare from the lamp is very annoying. Okay, we'll make note of that. Thank you. And then the last sheet is, is just our legend and general notes. So I don't know. I can I can hand it over now to. The, um, I don't know if you wanted to save this for after. I know I mentioned it earlier. Um, I'm done uh, uh, going through the proposed senior center. We can do this, or you want to stick with this and go through the building with the architect. Um, if you're staying with the senior center right now, right? Correct. Staying, go with the architect. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 
Thank you. Good evening. My name is Tim Eagles. I'm a principal with EDM for Architects and Engineers uh, for the Senior Center project. The design of the Senior Center um, is Um, the design of the Senior Center, um, we work very closely with the Senior Center Building Committee and with a consultant, uh, Lifespan Design, uh, whose uh, exclusive uh, purview is design of senior centers. Um, the goal of the project really was to create um, a, a building that was very sympathetic to uh, the center of Hackley, um, traditional um, agrarian, structure um, that felt very comfortable, a lot of uh, very similar materials to what you have here in town. Um, let's take a look real quick at the site plan and how, how this um, is working. Um, you have an entrance on the west end. Our, pro our um, site is at the east end of the, of the property. The, uh, library will be at the west end in the current senior center location. Um, the idea was to have, um, as Jeff mentioned, a um, circulation pedestrian greenway connecting the two um, so that they really work well together. Uh, so our entrance to the senior center is west facing. There's a single um, entry to the building, uh, which is very important in senior center design um, in terms of knowing who's in the building from a security standpoint. Um, and from just a health um, and safety standpoint. So we have a west-facing um, entrance. As, as um, Jeff said, uh, towards the entry as well, we have a, um, as he put it, an arched or a semicircle seating area out front, which is breakout space from the uh, multi-purpose room inside. Um, the parking, all that handicap parking will be towards the center of, on the east end of the greenway uh, with a large uh, at grade pedestrian access across uh, the driveway to a curbless entry. Um, very important once again with seniors, uh, level surfaces for them to traverse. Um, so as you come across the, um, the crosswalk here, uh, there'll be a series of bollards, some are lit, some are not lit, um, that will um, have a curbless uh, entry point to uh, the main piazza facing the, uh, facing the entry to the building. Upon entering the building, I'll just flip to the floor plan here. Upon entering the building, uh, we have a vestibule uh, with power doors at the front, power sliding doors that people can come into, um, into the reception area, which is control of the building. Uh, that will be staffed all the time uh, with either staff or volunteers, uh, check-in station. So the goal is to have everybody uh, that enters the building have a senior center card to be able to check in so that they know they've come and gone left the building as well as identify what types of programs they've been involved in. Um, there's a large living room library area as part of the front there. Um, to the right as you would enter, uh, there's a large multi-purpose room. It also has an independent entry um, so that it and the bathrooms can be used um, by others off hours um, from the senior center so there's more flexibility for the town. Uh, there's an office wing to the left up behind the reception, an art room, a classroom, a lounge, uh, fitness center, an exercise area all off the central corridor. Uh, the lounge actually opens to a little green space um, on the north side of the building. Um, we have a nurse's suite, companion restroom, uh, the major toilets, uh, which are off an open corridor between the spaces, um, and then the kitchen. Also to the south on this end, uh, we have access off what uh, Jeff termed the loading area um, on this portion of the building. 
and we're just a smidge over 12,000 square feet in terms of uh, the scale of the building. In terms of uh, the architecture of the building, um, we have some elevations, which we can show you. The idea really, um, and the inspiration for the building uh, was an uh, agrarian barn structure. Um, so the idea was to have cupolas up top. Um, we proposed based on information we got from uh, public works and um, and working with the uh, Senior Center Committee, uh, a standing scene metal roof, which is very typical for agrarian structures. Um, we have uh, clapboard siding, um, double hung windows, uh, a little bit of stone trim on the building, uh, but very simple, uh, very simple materials. Um, you had asked the last time we were here to have a view of what it may look like from uh, middle Street or what it will look like uh, the primary primary structure that you're going to see from Middle Street will be the library and this is some early renditions of what they think uh, their property or their building will look like um, they're currently in design and obviously we'll be back in front of you folks in a little while with uh, their actual building but um, from what we know this is where they're at now um, the uh, senior center will be talked to the east end of the site. A 3D kind of bird's eye view of the site once again shows uh, the library on the west end of the site, the entry drive that comes in, one-way circulation through the site uh, for the safety of the uh, seniors and the library folks, uh, one-way exit on the, on the uh, north edge of the property. So. We're getting people further away from uh, the intersection with Russell Street uh, and, and make it an easier transition out onto uh, Middle Street. The, this depicts the uh, greenway connecting the two buildings. Uh, it also depicts the, uh, the crosswalk, uh, the front entry and seating area, as well as the path uh, that somebody would take um, if they were to use uh, the, the senior center and library parking area as overflow from the Legion, the connection that we've made to those sites. A view of, a view of the front of the building um, as you enter. Uh, once again, uh, open uh, post and beam type structure at the front of the building, uh, the metal roofs, dormers, uh, very simple um, clapboard siding, um, and a little bit of detail. Uh, stone trim at the base. These will be the lit bollards along the front and then transferring over to nine lit bollards around the corner. That's about what we have. We have, um, I've got three dimensional views that if you wanted to see from around the rear and the size of the buildings, uh, of the building up top. There was a tornado warning, not a watch, but a warning just in this part of the state. Okay. Where do people go if a tornado's on its way? How, how sturdy is it? How, uh, how, how, what winds can it absorb? Um, it's designed all the requisite. Uh, winds that the building code requires. Where do people go up a park with tornadoes on its way? There's no cellar. Where, is there some place internally that's going to be safe and see the building starts collapsing? No? That's just a question. It's designed to, to require building code requirements. That's a question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're we talking about climate change and apparently tornadoes on the ground. Um, I just want to touch on a couple of things. Um, the 
right away as one of them. And so I think what we're looking to do, and it was a comment from Berkshire Design and Peer Review Letter, suggesting that we may want to have some sort of cross-access easement to allow the Legion to utilize the senior center parking and then um, also to allow the town uh, to use the Legion property that's not within that right of way for emergency access. And so I think you know, to Mr. Dwyer's question about where the deliveries and the, and the garbage uh, vehicles going to, um, which what is their circulation pattern, I think we would be looking to only allow uh, emergency vehicles as far as access to the site and also for overflow Legion parking. I do want to step back and talk about the zoning a bit. Uh, this is located in the business zoning district in the village center overlay district. These are municipal uses, potentially 48 section three um, educational uses as well. Um, but I think under the municipal uses, you look and they're allowed by right in these zoning, in this, in these zoning districts. Um, and I think without rehashing how we got to this point again, what I'd like to submit is I've got some letters of support some, some, from some folks who may be here and some folks who may not be here. Uh, supporting the senior center. And so I, I would just ask that the board separate the use of the senior center, which I think the town has agreed is a vital use on this lot in town. Um, and any issues you may have or suggestions you may have relative to the site. Um, so we comply with the use and dimensionally we comply, say for the frontage. <clears throat> We've got about 160 feet of frontage. We're required to have some more than that. We've been in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a finding that effectively allows the development of this site as we're proposing it. Um, the site itself is pre-existing, non-conforming from the time that uh, the town uh, began to own it. They haven't changed its configuration. So with that, I'd like to submit the, the letters if it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, as far as the, the, the pre-existing CBA granted the variance for the for the, for the frontage, so that's really a not, I mean the use is a non-issue and the frontage is a non-issue because of the CBA variance. Um, you suggested that this, this perhaps subject to a certain code in the law for you. What, what was the purpose of making that uh, declaration? Just simply suggesting that it, um, if that was the case, if it was in fact subject to 48 section three, deemed an educational use for both. Um, the planning board would, as is under your zoning bylaw, uh, really only be able to look at the, the bulk, the height. Uh, so just the same educational use that the uh, $5 monstrosity <laughs> had between uh, Mr. Sardesky, that's not what happened to here. And I might have a different characterization of that, of that use. And I think, I mean, we're looking at a public library in the senior center here. But I just wanted to contextualize these uses as certainly municipal uses allowed in these zoning districts under the under the, your zoning bylaw. And maybe to talk a little bit about the dimensions, Jeff, if you want to talk about the shared space. Thank you. Um, what's different from uh, what I'm going to speak to on the board here on the screen here is uh, on the board for the senior center of design, um, the charts that are on that design plans are specific for the senior center. What I'd like to talk about here that's on the screen um, are both the parking area and open space for the combined site for the library and the senior center, and then underneath that is broken out. Um, to show that we are adhering to the zoning regs in all manners. So on the left here, you see a uh, parking area summary chart. Uh, the requirement is two times the square footage of the building, and I have that in parentheses. So if you're looking at the entire site, we have um, a requirement of 48,480 square feet. We're providing 49,855 square feet. Now that number does not include the colored up paved parking area on the region. That is specific to the town's property alone. Um, it also does not include the entry and exit colored up uh, curb cuts off of Middle Street. Now if you break up the parking uh, individually, you'll see that we have a yellow dashed line 
down in the center of the site, which is delineating the uh, senior center and the library sites pertaining to the parking area. Um, again, if you were to take the, the zoning calculation uh, for the library, we're required 24,284 square feet, and we're providing just over there 24,706. Now that number provided um, is everything to the left of that yellow line. And again, same calculation for the senior center. We're increasing it from 24,196 to 25,149. That number is over to the right of the yellow dashed line. Um, the, line that, that, that way you got sufficient parking for the senior center. Correct. And so in other words, you're sharing that lot. Correct. So everything to the right of that dash line, uh, we're meeting the requirement for the senior center. Everything to the left, we're meeting the requirement for the library. Yes, why, the, the, why doesn't the library show that and not you? I don't understand this. You show all these other parts of there, and that's not yours, right? To the left of that. Well, we're looking at. If, if you look at the, the combined site, if this was a combined site that's under one ownership, um, the first line would be uh, what we're looking at, and that is, uh, uh, we're showing that we're, we're meeting the... These are two separate projects on one side. Correct, and, that, and, and what I was speaking to before was the design plans for this project alone. That, those plans have that chart specific to that site, which we are meeting that requirement. Um, we're, we're showing this up on the screen here for any questions pertaining to the entire property. Um, we can, I can continue with this with open space or... Have you discussed this with the library? Have you agreement with this? Yes, we've done. We have the architect and the civil engineer from the library. They're willing to speak on behalf of this. So well, we've done this very uh, closely to the design. So if you look at where the yellow line is, I'll use my finger to point. Part of the issue was we're trying to maximize parking for both facilities and all of these, in our minds, it's all town parking and will be shared between the two. Um, but they would, they wanted, they being the library, wanted a parking lot right here that's still loaded to put parking close to the library, which we very much understood. The, to, to maximize parking, we couldn't squeeze, turn another parking lot in the middle between this edge and this. As you can see, the dimension here, if we were to do that, it goes over the edge. So to maximize the parking, this flow with this diagonal parking and one bigger lot here with a smaller lot here made sense. Even though technically these spots belong to the library, you know, from a, just meeting the, uh, requirements chart standpoint it appears that it's part of this larger lot um, we're actually going to build this entire lot as part of the senior center property so their their parking part of their parking will already be there when they start their project so so we're going to build as part of the senior center project we're going to build to this line Right here. So, so these parking spots are, are going to all be built as part of the senior center project. Even though on paper, this this line through here belongs to the library, it all belongs to the town. So, in in working out with the library folks and the senior center folks, it made more sense to design this parking lot to the stormwater management for all of this together as part of the initial project instead of trying to add these little pieces on late at a later date because then we'd have to figure out you no. know enlarge the stormwater enlarge why don't you put your bowing line here and let them put the park in there and design that you, you say you've got enough there that's irrelevant. Let's, let's stick to the topic and not worry about who belongs to where. Exactly. They belong to the town. Right. And they can share parking. It's right in the zoning bylaw. Right. Did you want to, Jeff, did you want to go through the green space? Yes. Although something you said just troubles me a little bit. 
you're saying the library, I thought we had asked for, uh, that's what I thought you were providing, a complete parking design and drainage design for the entire site. Yes. Yep. Is that what you're providing here? Yes. yes. So the drainage structures that you proposed over in this area are going to serve the library as well? They will not. The, the drainage structures in this area are for this parking lot. There will be okay. drainage structures then in addition. We do not have a design that shows drainage and parking for the entire site. Is that correct? The details on the drainage for this side of the site we do not have tonight. Okay. We asked for that as part. We wanted a cohesive plan. We did not get a cohesive plan. So, I just want to speak to um, uh, Phil Palumbo, OPM, uh, Senior Center Project. So because they're two different projects, they're going to be constructed two different time periods. Okay, so to complete the Senior Center Project, we're going to install a stormwater system that's going to serve the stormwater, you know, that's going to shed on the Senior Center side of things. The library's going to construct, construct their stormwater system once we're occupied. Okay, we, we, we asked for the same Thing we ask of Home Depot, which yes. is to show us build out, yes. parking, drainage, everything. We, we don't care that you construct them at two different times. What we want to see is one cohesive plan with everything detailed because yes. their drainage could impact yours and yours could impact theirs and likewise parking. You know, right. if there's no problem constructing them, pick so, a number, a year apart, right. as long as up front we see one plan that shows everything. So uh, putting together one plan that shows the stormwater systems that is going to serve that property is easily done. Um, we've been coordinating with the library team this whole time, so that can happen. The reason why you got two different sets of drawings is because you have a senior center set that's going to go up the bid prior to the library set, and, and so that's kind of why you're seeing two different sets of drawings. But we can easily put together um, a cohesive plan. Uh, if I could, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Christopher Garcia with Garcia Gillespie de Souza. We are the civil engineers uh, for the library project. And um, while it's not shown on one plan, this is the site utility plan that was submitted to Berkshire, and they had reviewed uh, our drainage calculations in addition to the calculations that were provided with uh, by the HB. Um, so this plan shows what the drainage would be on the library site. Um, as Jeff uh, from the HBA previously mentioned, there's a drainage line that's located on the north side of the lot that drains, um, that heads towards Middle Street. In terms of storm drainage, uh, we'll also have a series of deep sump catch basins, um, storm uh, water quality inlets uh, to control runoff. Um, all of the paved areas would be collected by those drainage systems, conduits to below um, subsurface grade um, infiltration structures, similar to what is going to be installed for the senior center site. Um, there's one here for all the paved area. There'll be another one on the west side of the library for roof drainage to infiltrate that. Again, with overflows that will drain uh, to this uh, drainage line. So there was uh, our drainage analysis included that again to the 100 year storm as we're required to use uh, the DP stormwater management plan. Um, and again, that was reviewed by Berkshire. One comment they did make um, because we're at a different stage in design, we still need to do test hits in these locations, which we intend to do in, in the coming weeks. We had used the information that VHP had for their test bits. Our system is actually higher than theirs, so we don't believe that ground one would be an issue with that. And I believe that the Berkshire Review uh, agreed with us on that. So we'll be performing those, and obviously we'll be coming in front of you again once we uh, finalize uh, the, the building and design and whatnot. So hopefully that answers that question. Thank you. Move around here. Um, again, the explanation uh, from the team here with me uh, on the yellow line. Um, 
like to just speak to the open space relative to that. Um, same, same kind of chart showing the split between uh, uh, the total site and the split between the two, uh, two individual sites alone. Um, the requirement under zoning is 20% uh, green, uh, open space. Um, and if you look at the line one, combined sites, the uh, entire property uh, is 120,000 uh, square feet. Um, so that calculates to a requirement of uh, 24,070, which is the 20%. We're providing 25.6% uh, for the total property. Uh, breaking it down, where um, the requirement is 20, we're uh, providing 24.8 for the library and the senior center. Uh, we're increasing it to 26.4%, um, meeting the requirement under the zoning bylaws. Um, that wraps up for that. Uh, those charts. I don't know if you have any questions for those, or we can move on. I just had. Uh, in your, let's go back over your calculation of the parking area. Yeah. You don't count any of this, correct? That is that is uh, within the calculation. You are counting. You are counting that. That is not parking. Um, I I've, I've spoken that with not the parking. building commissioner. That is and, not parking. Okay. I, I was told otherwise. The way, the way in a nutshell, yeah. the way we calculate parking. Obviously, those are parking spaces. Those are parking spaces. The driveway between them counts as parking. Where there's no parking. That is not parking. That's a driveway. Okay. Here I, we have a driveway, a parking, parking, a driveway. That, for lack of a better term, rectangle all counts as parking. Jim, is the whole driveway lane counted or just half of it? In this case, the driveway is all counted. Here, this is a single driveway through. Correct? Correct. That counts as parking. That here. Over here, you have parallel parking. Half of this driveway counts as parking, not the double lane. Okay. Um, based on uh, reading the zoning bylaws, I didn't see an actual definition. Um, there's no definition section for um, specific. Uh, that, that's uh, correct. There's not a yeah. specific definition. And most engineers, when they get to the most of the engineers that normally do the re designs, understand how we do it. I have called the building commissioner and spoke with him, and that is the direction that I was given. The planning board is the one that makes that determination, not the building okay. inspector. Okay, unfortunately. Just, okay, one, so one more thing. Uh, you're showing parking spaces down there. Is that being counted? That is not That is not being counted for um, our property, correct? Nothing off the site. Correct. The 200, uh, I'm sorry, the 120,000 square feet would just be our property alone. In a nutshell, you've got 104 spaces for 24,000 square feet of building. Two buildings, 24,000 square feet, ballpark. Down the road, there is a 20,000 square foot, two buildings going up. They have 131 spaces, and they say they need them all. So you have 30% more, I'm sorry, 20% more building. 30% less parking for more buildings. So something's not adding up here. My opinion as a planning board member is you do not have adequate parking for those two buildings. Excuse me, what was the building you were comparing it to? What was its use? The new proposed um, harbor freight and rails where the Okisa site is. Okay, just approved a recently. A commercial. We were both commercial, yes. Last step. Check. What? Never mind. I'd like to make one one clarification. Uh, certain people have interpretations the way they would like to see things. We have to follow what the bylaw says. So if the building commissioner has his design, that may be his design. But if you read the parking lot, it's adequately clear. The planning board shall not have the authority to waive the two for one requirement. It's not like we don't need it. We don't have that authority to leave that. The interpretation I just gave you for parking has been in effect for many, many, many years. And it's not something that we have to change otherwise. And if somebody gave you erroneous information, don't blame us. For example, another thing, Tom, you kind of refer to the fact that 
uh, and the design of the roof, standing seam. We'll get to that. No, but I just want to make one comment, correction. Uh, the Historical Commission came to the planning board, they wanted to have a historical district. We worked with them very, very closely. They designed the roofs, the mullions, and everything. We didn't, we didn't say it must have a standing seam or we don't like standing seam. We worked with the Historical Commission to come up with these rules and regulations. So if someone says we're biased against the 10 roof, that's not the case. So just to make no, some clarification. Jim, how, how many square feet of new building can this parking sustain? I, I couldn't give you that the answer off the top of my head. That's, that's for them to decide what they do. But they, but they need, obviously they need more space. To me it is. Sure, and maybe to address a couple of these different points. Um, I do think that they're different projects. I think the library and the senior center are different from a Harbor Freight, 16,000 about square foot Harbor Freight, and a 4,000 square foot coffee roasting facility. And so I think you have to look at the intensity of the use, times of day, the anticipated traffic, etc. Um, I would suspect that our folks have done that and they feel comfortable with what we've got here. Uh, to talk about the definition of off street parking, the parking area, um, understanding that the two to one is unwaverable, right? It's something that you're clear in your bylaw cannot be waived. What, what I see though as hey, where you have the authority to waive is what is considered the off street parking. And it sounds like what I'm hearing is there is a definition of off street parking that you've identified which uh, encapsulates some of the parking, but not all of the parking. So I think you know, looking at the time and figuring that it's not going to close tonight, but we would suggest that, uh, we would hope that it would. Um, what we'll do is we'll go take a look to make sure that we feel comfortable that these sites will operate efficiently, that we will have enough parking. Uh, understanding that there may or may not be a disconnect between the two to one parking ratio for these uses, understanding that we have to comply with it, but also understanding that it's not a one size fits all approach for, you know, 40,000 square foot space requires 80,000 square feet of parking. And there might be, it might be a warehouse and there might only be three people in it. So you don't necessarily need that type of, of parking. But that being said, we'll go back and take a look at it. Um, I believe that we had gone to the Historical Commission uh, and they were in support of the standing scene roof. So just, you know, we have been... There is a problem with that comment. Okay. Back in November, the Historical Commission specifically gave us an email that they no longer wish to participate in reviews of projects. Okay. They reviewed this project. You can't pick and choose, I want to review this and I want to review that. You need to review everything or nothing. So to be honest with you, the fact that they approved that design really doesn't hold a lot because of the comments they made back in November that they don't want to participate. Sure. Uh, and just way, looking at the I'm, excuse me, sir. Just looking at the village center roadway. Not so right. Again, we're trying not to make this right? I think, as a town, we're trying to and, and, and the other th the other thing is standing metal seam roof is not allowed. Under your zone, right, that is correct. The, there are, there are several SB. standing metal seam roofs in town. Those metal seam roofs replace metal roofs that look like shingles. How or why the building inspector allowed them, I don't know. You have to ask the building inspector because he doesn't report to us, okay? And I know he's in favor of the metal seam roof for a variety of reasons. However, the planning board has to go by the zoning bylaw. And that comment is clear, it's not allowed. I mean, as far as the two for one parking, you know it yourself. We have required two for one parking on yes. every project that ever has come before us. If they don't think they need it, we allow them not to put it in as long as there is room on the property. And a number of projects have called it reserve parking, but there is room if whatever needs to be built should the use ever change down the road. Okay. Yes, understood. Um, Mr. Chairman, I I just want to make one clarification for myself. A uh, apparent conflict of interest. Uh, in bygone days, I was a captain in the United States Army, having served in 66, 67, and 68. Hence, I am a member of the American Legion. I am also a senior citizen. Checking with a conflict of interest lawyer in Boston, they said, perhaps you should fill out this form required uh, 
indicating that I may have some conflict of interest, but it will not deter which way I vote. And so I should make that announcement. Perfect. Thank you very much. Is that into record? Yeah, I think I'll just follow with the town clerk. I did. Perfect. Um, so I guess at a high level, that concludes at least the preliminary aspects of our presentation. And, uh, assuming that this is going to get continued to that July 17th, I think what we'd really like to hear is some feedback from the planning board um, of uh, some homework for us to do. Well, what you see that you like, what you don't like, you know, within reason, please, um, and just allow us to, to, to think about it. I think this has been a, a thought out project. This has started quite some time ago, has been designed by some very good professionals. Um, and I think you'll see a, a letter relatively clean from Berkshire Design supporting that. Um, but understanding how these things work, you know, we want to hear from the planning board. I mean, the light fixture, that's, that's an easily resolvable issue. Yeah. It's just it's a picture, if we got a picture of the, uh, same, oh, I'm sorry, the library fixture with the lamp canto true. And if you, you know, the old typical shoebox light, where the light is, is obviously, like I said before, either recessed or flush with the bottom of the shade, the 15 feet is fine. Um, there is a problem with some of the lighting uh, on the library. The photometric drawing shows some rather high numbers at the northern border. Um, and obviously, you know, you've got a, there's residences due north of the library and along the entire southern property of the entire project. Um, so just, you need to bring the lighting numbers, the photometrics down on, on the library. I think there was some numbers I saw that were like 2.1 or 1.8 at the very boundary for the library. The senior center looked okay, but the library looked at it like it has some numbers. And that was on the, uh, well, due north of the library, I believe, I believe it was the, uh, the Kula property. So, I mean, just make sure those are good. Um, obviously, we can't approve standing metal, we will not approve the standing metal seam roof. Um, go look at the parking. Drainage, uh, the, the, the senior center has put test pits in, so. yes. and they were good. Yes. And the library needs to get those same things done before. Can, I ask, uh, can I ask where those test pits were? Oh. Yeah, they were done at the location of the stormwater system. Where? So, it's, so essentially the center of that parking area that you see here. Just there and there. Which way does that water flow? Uh, so all this is sub subsurface storage. Correct. Which way does the water flow? Uh, so are you to protect the groundwater or sufficient water? You think the drainage sub water sub is in the system. No, 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 no. So the water is going to be any water that. I'm right. not worried about the pipes going direct in it. When it gets below, which way does it go? Or into this pipe system and then get the, to the subsurface pipes. But it'll hold that, that those pipes will hold 100 years stored. So and then it'll release it. And right? then it'll and and trade into the soil. And right. so all the site water is going to enter these pipes and it's going to stay there. Those pipes are flat. So it's going to sit there and it's going to enter. So that, none of that water is going to get into the subsoil. Correct. They are perforated pipes and uh, the, the water that's in there will infiltrate into, into the, the ground. Okay. What direction does it go? When it goes into the ground, what direction does it go? What's the groundwater flow? What way does the groundwater flow? The groundwater flow? Yeah. The groundwater flow. The groundwater flow. We need to do studies there to determine groundwater flow. For a cost of something. Could you speak in the mic, please? George Thomas, the cost of the engineers. I was going to perform the test pits for the infiltration system. We didn't do a study to determine direction of groundwater flow. Well, I have a big problem with that. All the buildings, the south side of that property, all have stone foundations. Are you going to be liable? All right, and the architect and the peer review engineer, are you going to be liable for those folks after 
you're gone, all you guys disappear, no one's a bill, and those people end up with mold or water in those stone foundation suburbs. The, uh, I can speak with BHB about that and just look at it more closely, but my opinion is that the water is unlikely to migrate south towards those uh, residential stone foundations. The soil is of type that will drain rapidly, and most of it will drain vertically. Are you going to put that in writing with a guarantee if those people, again, get mold in their cellars? And why I'm saying this, on the north side of Corpus School, they put legion bases in. The roof and the roof. Right? What happened on the north wall, mold appeared. They dug that all up and they tied that drainage right into the drainage system that goes off the street. Right? What happens, at, now this is not just open fields. There's houses there and buildings, all with stone foundations. Who's going to guarantee? that they will not infiltrate either with water or cause mold in their cells. Who's going to guarantee it? The architect? You going to make a guarantee? Of course you will. So we better find that out. So on, on your list of things, uh, I'll just reiterate, I think we're getting there anyway, but <clears throat> what we've been looking for and what we asked for uh, quite a while back is basically <clears throat> the full design of the site. Just as we asked from Home Depot, we want the library and, I'm sorry, we want the senior center at build out and the library shown as a pad site with full drainage calculations and parking calculations for the entire site. On one print. On one print. On one page. Or at least maybe several. Or at least that. several. I mean, they can be combined. Yes. So several of them, it's too, it's too, too busy for one sheet. Okay. okay. The, um, a couple other comments. The, uh, this is more for the audience and the abutters. There are a number of construction easements required from, your, from the neighbors, either cutting trees, building um, walls, or whatever. The planning board has zero authority on that. This is entirely up to each neighbor to investigate and approve or not at their will. This is not something the planning board can do anything about. It says right on the drawings, construction even to cut a tree, to put a wall on or otherwise. So, just be aware that there's a number of things that you might be requested, and it's up to you. Um, oh yeah, snow removal. Where is the snow going to go? original design was, uh, from the original concepts, was we actually shrunk the, uh, the width of this parking area to allow for a green area on uh, both sides of the parking field. We also have some dead islands where uh, still can be pushed. How many feet? That's, is it, is, I this, believe that's this seven. Is uh, the, the bottom here is 14 feet here, and then this is seven up here. Okay. That's seven, I believe that's five or less. I don't have that number okay. on this set of hands. There is no way you're going to put snow on seven feet of property, seven feet of grass, and three feet of grass, considering this is a walkway between the buildings and for people to walk on. How, how are they going to get rid of this? Right now, the snow from this, from the existing senior center is just pushed back onto the grass. Very easy. There isn't room to put part snow on this property. So if I may, uh, I think the plan is to have it temporarily stored and then trucked away. By whom? Uh, Where? The, the town department of public works. 
I want to see a letter from the DPW director that says he will has time and money to do it. And where is it going to go in the town? We don't have a snow yard. Right. Okay. And this is aquifer. Is it aquifer? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Is it aquifer? Yes, it is. That means it must be stored in the aquifer. And the aquifer specifically said, well, the aquifer said that must be any snow stored in the aquifer or trucked off site must be from the area, from the town and not from outside of town. So you can move it within the town, within the aquifer. Mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea where they're going to move it. And that's a whole lot of work with the DPW that we don't, they don't currently do that I'm aware of. You know, so there's a, there's a bit, there's a, this could be a budget item there. Tom, one part of the construction, and during the presentation, there was mentioning hooking up to the natural gas line. Has the moratorium been lifted, or are you going to have propane tanks? We want propane tanks. Where? Should, should be recorded on the plan. They want food for it, by the way. Yeah, the back of the plan. Go to the utility sheet. There's these propane tanks, right? C105, yes, you can see the propane. No, those are the condensing units. Just below that, we're not showing this plan because there's some great propane tanks are showing the utility plan here. Okay. We're not making any connections to the natural gas due to the moratorium. We're bringing the natural gas and stumming it prior to the property for future connection. Thank you. Is there a sidewalk? Going from this project to Route 9. I mean, ultimately, yes. Excuse me? Right, so here it is. You can travel down Middle Street. No, not Middle Street, up to Route 9. And directly through the Legion property? Because I think that's the only way to get Right. I seen the plan earlier, and they showed a sidewalk running right on the property line, right here, uh, connecting an ADA sidewalk. Correct. We're just we're basically under, under this proposal. We're and bringing why, if you look at your road on your plan, why are you set so far away till you got marked out parking from from the uh, Richard Coach's boundary line? You see it Take from the road. western property line of the American why, Legion. Why, why, why does it have to be like that? Because basically what we're doing is, uh, once we finish our utility connections uh, and repair that main area, um, I'll shoot back to the raw materials here. Uh, you can see here, so yeah, that's his property line we're bringing this way. What we'd like to do is to maintain that uh, flow from the existing curb cut on Route 9 directly to the site. Um, so by doing that, we wouldn't want, we wouldn't want to carry these spaces further over Basically, what that's doing is delineating uh, a, a straight line from the curb cut to the site. Do you and we're lessening have, the impact. Do you have permit, where these lines you got drawn in and out, do you have permission to go beyond the layout, the 30 foot easement? The 30 foot easement starts at the boundary line, according to the Registry of Deeds, right. and goes each 30, 30 feet, feet right. not 50 feet. Right. Or 60 feet. Where do, where, where do you get that number? Where, what, how do you do this? I believe that's somebody else's land. I right? believe, right. And so obviously, if you're crossing somebody else's lands, you need their permission to do it through a license or an easement or some other interest in that land. And so that's something that we have worked through with the Legion. It's their land. They're the one that can grant the right through license or easement. Do you have anything in writing that I allows not, you to? This evening, I do not. Excuse me? I, this evening, I do not have anything to submit to you in writing. Noise. You, the senior center had a portable generator, and I'm assuming both buildings are air conditioned. Obviously, air conditioners, the condensers make some very irritating whining noises. The generator must be exercised on some frequent basis. What are you doing for noise abatement of those items? Because you've got residences so many nearby. So the condensers are for the senior center located on the east corner back in this zone, away from the residences. Right there. Um, the generator is located out here, and we have uh, specified a you know a containment package on it to reduce the noise. 
It is not a portable generator. I, I realize that. What, what is the noise coming out? What is the noise within three feet of the generator? I do not know that off the top of my head, but we can get that for you. Sure. Another question I have. To the north boundary, it's all agricultural land. What type of barrier are you putting there to stop agricultural drift in this rain? We have no barrier. Why not? We're Is there going to be complaints because they spray those fields? And you got this building right next to those fields. What's going to happen to all that agricultural land? Is it going to go out of business? Or are you going to put up a 10 foot or whatever you put in that way to stop the drift. I think it's a good point. We'll take a look at it. Yeah. Something, some sort of vegetative screenwriting or something. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a thoughtful point. I'm not going to put a bicycle stand in there. One of the, one of the uh, town meeting people asked about being able to ride his bicycle to the senior center. Do you have the ride to that? Can we see budget for that? Yes, there is. There is. Okay. Uh, it's hard to see under the dotted line in the overhead of the building where you can see there's a bike track shown just to the left of that dash line. It looks like there's sufficient area should additional bike tracks be required. Think of a seating here. The drainage system. You're running. What is that? A 10-inch line. You're running into the manhole that's connected to 12. It's a street proposed 12-inch overflow line from the subsurface of the drainage system. So 12-inch all the way into the street. No, only only up to that property line. That takes off from the 10-inch. Correct. If you come, uh, it's a 10 inch line that the oh, existing one is 10 inch. What's the existing no, pipeline on the street? In the street? I think that's a 12. I'm going to just show for you. Facility sheet, C105. Um, if you go down to the inset, um, the 10 inch goes out to the surface. I know that how great it's made. What else is it? Take it. Well, the 12 inches in Middle Street, the 10 coming off of that is a lateral into the manhole where we're tying it to. Right. We're showing a 12 inch coming to that manhole. It's closed, but we're designing the system for the 100 year store, which is not showing any overflow. Would both gentlemen so, please use the mic? I'm sorry. How can you put 12 inches? Manhole and then neck it down to 10 inch into a 12 inch drain. Well, the, that 10 inch is an existing, sorry. That 10 inch is an existing condition. Um, so, why did you, you even put in a 12 inch? Th this 12 inch is an overflow. Uh, under the town um, bylaws, it's a requirement to have uh, an emergency overflow from any underground system. So, that's why we're introducing that. So, only if that system, only if that system, please correct me. Only if. This system completely fills, even though it's designed for a 100-year storm. So in the most rare flood event or storm event, if this system completely fills up, there has to be some way for that water I to get up. I understand this, but it's not, why are you using from that system a 12-inch 12 12 inch line to a 10-inch line? Seems to me you would dig all that up and put a 12-inch line directly into the main drainage. We try to avoid digging up. Uh, the road, and I, I don't know if there is actually uh, a moratorium there now from a uh, newly paved. Wait a minute, a moratorium on what? If we could just put it back into the, the frame for a minute. If we're talking about not having money in the DPW budget to truck snow off site, and you want the town, right, because we're still talking about the town, to rip up the roadway and to change the size Listen, of the Speedy Gonzalez. In the road, I want to make sure that this is built right for the future. Under, uh, we understand. If I could again, Christopher Garcia. The 10 inch and the 12 inch have different slopes. The 10 inch has the same capacity as the 12 because there is more pitch on it. Um, and that was modeled in the drainage calculations that were reviewed by the third party. So they are aware of that condition. So that's, that drainage system is going to guarantee 
I'm sorry. Is that drainage system is done at Yes, it's modeled to handle the 100 year storm. The 10 inch capacity was modeled in that calculation. And our Did runoff the, rates are less than the capacity of the pipe. Uh, it's in the drainage. I don't know that there are any guarantees, but we've designed it to the standards of the mass DEP, which is a 100 year storm, and that's what the system is designed for. Those are the standards we need to design it to. Any other questions from the board? Yeah. Uh, just, uh, Mr. Speaker, would it be appropriate to ask one of the select people here to speak as to go, go to Memorial Library and how that fits into this thing? That's yes, but not right now. Okay. Yes. Well, Tom is uh, writing down some of the things that are necessary. I noticed there's an outdoor seating area. I call it the echelon rule. That has to be calculated into parking as well. Not for business. Not for business. Pardon? It's not for business. Why are you going to make them do that? The, we, it, it's in the bylaw, Randy. Right? That's, that's why it has to be done. It's, people have a perception that we can pick or choose what's nice and what isn't nice. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go through a town meeting to make these changes. If somebody feels compelled, get two-thirds vote at a town meeting and we'll, we'll change it. But uh, if it's in the rules and in the bylaws, we're obligated to really follow them as closely as we can. Demo plan. Demo plan. Should be there. Demo. It has been provided. All right. So when this site is the plans are to build a senior center first, correct? Yes. yes. So then the demo plan comes in second. How are the people going to get in and out of the senior center when this demo is going on? So currently the way it's planned is the library project is going to be phased so that first half of the library project, the entrance to the senior center is going to be the north side and only the north side, the entrance and exit. And then the second half of the library project is going to be the south side. So there's going to be movement in the library project in terms of staging area, material, stockpile area, so we can get access still off Middle Street to the senior center building. So under no circumstances is traffic going to be shifted to the emergency route? Correct. Thank you. Are you going to guarantee that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's how we have to show on the drawings. Yes. Mr. Cesar, Mr. Sarzinski raised a good point. The building of these two projects makes the Goodwin Memorial Library no longer a library but a proposed, from what we've heard, is going to be the new meeting rooms or offices for um, possibly planning board, park and rec, and a few others. One of the points, I, I know that the senior center and the libraries have said, well, that's really not our, we're not doing that, we're not our responsibility to provide parking for it. However, it may not be necessarily their responsibility, but one of the comments I made was 104 spaces is not adequate for this project. One of the reasons for that is there's nine spaces there right now for the library. Nine spaces isn't even close to adequate for what the, that building will be used for. A planning board meeting alone takes up six of those spaces. And so therefore, basically, and we typically have anywhere from one visitor at a planning board member at a planning board meeting to sometimes, I don't know, maybe a dozen or two. And that's just one of our meetings. You've also got the other um, departments that'll be meeting in there. Somebody somewhere needs to provide parking for them because there's not off-street parking available and 104 spaces, like I said, I'm not gonna repeat it again just isn't right enough. Um, people going to walk is one thing, but not even being able to walk the parking is a whole other problem. 
And we certainly don't want to walk in across Route 9 to the town hall. Sure. Um, and so I would, I would again just reiterate that I think just a strict mathematical calculation is not the way to look at this. I think we have to look at the uses, just like the library use and the hours of operation, the senior center use, the hours of operation, and whatever the library, the current library turns into and the hours of operation. Two, two for one parking is a hard, fast rule. And that must be met. So what is the current status, if I may, of the Goodwin Library? That it does not meet the current zoning bylaw of two to one parking. That's correct. And, and it's it, a library. Right. But and would it be considered a pre existing non conformity that may continue on the site? Absolutely. Pre existing non conforming use. When you remove the use and you now make it a meeting room and office space that is not a library anymore and you change the use and the grandfathering loses under Mass General Law, Chapter 48, you know exactly where I'm going, so I don't need to, I don't need to tell you. Your face as you do it. I don't need to tell you that one. We, frankly, we may disagree with that interpretation. I think stepping back, um, I don't think there's a determination of the use of that library at this point. Uh, it's something that we'll talk to the to select board about. Um, Very soon, because that's gonna be part of something, and we just can't say, well, we're gonna deal with it in one year from now. No, we're going to deal with it with a plan ahead of time. Okay. If you want, if you want a comment, you can come to the microphone. We're going to open, going to open it up to the to the audience. Mr. Lawyer, the, the present library is creating a hardship when they leave one place. It's not in compliance with them. How can it be in compliance with anyone else? So if it's repurposed. That means that building has to be totally brought up to code. And again, we're looking for the future here, not just what's in front of us right now. This is town property. This is surrounded by road. And if they're going to repurpose this, if they're going to demolish it, that's another thing. But they're not. They're going to take what I hear from the select board. They're going to repurpose this for the municipal use. And that's going to be brought up because it's not handicap accessible, no bathroom during the summer. And, you know, it's just, I don't know how we're going to do this. Okay. okay. Other, other questions from the board? If not, we've got some time left before we continue. Um, any, people, anybody from the audience would like to speak to the zoning issues? I'm Ken Parker from 118 Mount Warner Road. I think you all know me. It's been a while since I was in town government and had it. So I would like you to give me a concise definition of what the planning board is responsible for. The entire zoning by a law book. The entire? And everything in it. So that means that you can look at the bylaws and make up your own mind as to what they have? No, the bylaw is clear on that and we need to apply it consistently. The zone, a zoning bylaw under state um, mass general laws does not need to be as succinct as a general bylaw. It is the intent of the zoning bylaw is what is important, and that has been upheld and made case after case of general court law. It appears to me that there are times when personal preference may be showing up. For instance, the issue of the old library is not part of this discussion, and yet you brought it up and said, we've got to make parking spaces for that. That's up to the town, not up to this particular setup. I didn't say this project needs to make parking spaces for it. I said that I just, my specific words, if, I'm, if, I didn't, if I said that the library needs to make spaces, I, I was wrong, but I didn't say that if I remember it. I said that we need to provide spaces for that because nine spaces isn't enough. I would agree with you, but the, the inclination or the intent, what you seem to say was 104 aren't enough and we need more because of that building. No, the 104 is not enough for the project. If you provided, I want to pick a number, 140 spaces. Whether that's right or wrong, it's irrelevant. But it's more spaces. That's probably, 
I would agree, maybe more than the library and uh, the senior center need. But according to the calculations that I just mentioned before about the two buildings further down on Route 9, the number is that they have to have 131 spaces for 20,000 square feet. So let's just say you provided 140 spaces. That's probably more than enough for the two buildings. It's probably enough for the library as well, okay? And it's going to meet the practice. The big problem is you don't have enough parking area for the two projects right now. I agree with you on that, and I understand that, and I would hope that in your deliberations that the existing library and the problems with that come under a separate discussion, that it does not impinge on these two projects. That is correct and wrong. This, everybody is, what I'm saying here is that the library needs, the old lot, the old good and memorial, but it's repurposed, needs parking. Nobody disagrees with that. However, where is that parking going to come from? I think that is for the town fathers and mothers to come up with a solution if they decide to use that old library for whatever purpose. It is not part of these two projects. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tom Bakula, 44 Middle. Uh, Burger Butters next door on the north side. We'd like to have a row of arborvitaes put through there. And I like that put in the plans. I need them about four feet apart, five feet, six feet tall. We have a farmer out there raising corn right now, and it's almost on top of your building. <coughs> You've got some big buildings here for two for 2.6 acre lot. How do you know how many people are going to use this senior center? Have you had a survey go out of the 1,800 seniors in town? Did you ask them if they're going to use this building? How do you know we're going to get 10% maybe? That's 180 people. 180 people could show up to this building. It's a $7 million building. You know, if you're going to get the people that you got showing up next door now, you don't need it. I know it's all voted for, but um, I just feel these buildings are huge, 12,000 square feet for uh, what the library, what the library use. Nobody knows how many people are going to use that. You know, you don't know. You could have 100 people going in through there every day. You don't know that. You don't. You're spending 7 million, 7 million, a lot of money. Um, one more point. I'm going to make it. It has nothing to do with this, but 44 Middle Street and 40 Middle Street are for sale right now. Right next door, 7.2 acres. That's what you want to be concentrating on. Move these buildings up front. You'll have six acres in the back. Leave the Legion alone. And you can even keep Hooker School if you want. Any questions? If you don't have to worry about where's all that snow going to go? It's going to go in our lot. That's where it's going now anyway. We get it right in our lot from the public school. That's what they're going to do. It's going to cost more. How do you know how much it's going to cost to operate this building? Anybody know? Huh? Yes. Think about it. Hundred, two hundred thousand a year. Each. You know, somebody's got to step back and think about it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Richard Wilder, 28 Shore Road. Uh, not long ago, before I retired, I used to do projects like this. It's called site work. Carl's site work, North Africa. And I have never, ever seen a surface drainage system designed like that without at least test borings or test pits. I see no documentation of that when I look at these plans. Uh, why was my first question is why wasn't that done and why how was that plan to design without that document? 
it was done. Yes. Where is the document? I've seen that. I, I looked at all these papers about three weeks ago. It wasn't there. It's in the stormwater management report. For some reason, it was uh, not obvious. Also, uh, the subject was also brought up that the outfall from that system goes into a tree built on Hill Street. Uh, a 12 inch line going into a 10. I wasn't at all happy with the explanation about that. That, that should not, a 12 inch line going into a 10. That's unacceptable. I've never seen it, and uh, I don't think no one I know has ever seen such a foolish thing. And uh, also, uh, in regard to that 30 foot right of way through the lower Legion parking lot, it's basically a fire lane. And there won't be any parking allowed in that fire lane. And I think there's, my opinion, there's no such thing as a little bit of grief. In this case, it's a lot of grief. That's all I can say. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Tudor, the chairman of the Municipal Buildings Committee. I had a couple of questions and maybe some follow-up. Um, maybe start with the uh, existing Goodwin uh, building. Uh, as you know, the purview of the Building Committee is to recommend on behalf of the Select Board what a future use for all the historic buildings in town may be. Uh, we've since made no determination on what exactly would go into the, into the existing facility. I'm guessing the fact that we have a limited amount of parking spaces would actually drive our, our recommendation on what types of uh, facilities we may add there. And it sounds like the planning board could not go into the good ones, so that may not be one of our recommendations to we had. Um, a question about uh, a comment that was made pertaining to the noise. Um, is there a specific zoning bylaw that you enforce pertaining to the noise requirements? Yeah, there's this, I, I forget the exact section, but it's under site plan approval about noise. Okay, so that's within your purview. I wasn't sure I saw that in the planning board. I appreciate that. Uh, sort of an off the wall comment, wondering if it looks like we had obtained the parking requirements. And I, and I think our committee, probably having spoken with both the other building committees, agree that this is a workable site plan for capacity. And it's going to take some effort, collaboration, and communication on all parties to make it work in terms of, you know, aligning their specific nighttime uh, events so that they don't overlap and things like that. We're a small town. I think we can work through that. Uh, that's important. But I, I saw uh, in the last meeting you had spoken with a, an owner about a property and uh, recommended they exercise the right to uh, transit development rights or tra transfer development rights. Yes. Could the town uh, look at exercising that right as well? I suppose they could. However, if the planning board, special permit, then the planning board feels that the parking is needed, then they wouldn't grant the TDR. In this particular case, I feel the parking is needed. So I would not necessarily, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's probably very premature, but the answer to the question is yes, because they could go after TDR. So theoretically, Property we purchased in North Hadley could be exercised as the TDR the parcel that we purchased last year. Maybe I misunderstand the, the way that that works. That's not agriculture. You get by agriculture. If you use it for agriculture, agriculture that would work. If that parcel is going to be used for agriculture and the town retains or puts a permanent easement on it. Okay, can I just jump in here? Uh, Please. TDR is not available for this site. Okay. Uh, TDR is available for uh, lots within the business and industrial zones with frontage on Route 9, Mill Valley Road, or North Maple. Okay. So frontage on uh, Middle Street does not qualify. Okay, appreciate okay. that. Uh, the next question is, is there an opportunity where the town could explore on-street parking on Middle Street as part of the capacity requirements? That is not of us. Not up to you, but it but it, it would satisfy the requirements of the parcel. No, no, no. The uh, bylaw, as it currently writ is written, have, requires that each parcel provide the required parking on site. On site. 
So we do not even allow you to lease your neighbor's land. You have to, you have to have it all. And, and Hadley has no on-street parking, to my knowledge. But if we did, that could never be accounted for in the calculation for no, I'm mean, sure it, it obviously is an occasional reliever, but uh, it can't be counted officially. Okay. So, uh, having heard what we heard tonight, what what exactly would the exercise be that would get you to accept the capacity of the lot? Is it is it looking at the building occupancy? Uh, adding those together, making certain assumptions that certain people are coming in multiple cars or their own car. I mean, how can we get past this? You know, what's the calculation you're looking for? If it's not, if, you know, we we can only go by the two for one parking and, and comparing right. it to other projects. You know, I don't think anybody could say well, we're going to need this many spaces. The senior center, a building this big, um, is an unknown for the town. A library this big is an unknown for the town. And, you know, nobody's going to, I don't think anybody would dare say, well, we will never exceed this. Okay. I, I suppose <laughs> one thing that could help is the senior center could provide us with a daily census and perhaps convince us that we really only have 20 people a day. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it would work out as. I know they have that. They, they have that record keeping capacity. They have the key fobs to check in. So they should be able to generate a uh, daily census. But it's not comparing apples to apples. You now have a building that is not exactly handicapped accessible going to a building that is fully handicapped accessible. And the design of this building is for its use to increase. Um, I mean, sure, I hope so. And what is that going to increase to? I mean, I don't think, I don't know how you make a get an educated guess at that. I mean, I would, um, benefit for the, for the benefit of the senior centers, I would hope it jumps jump by leaps and bounds. Um, I think that's what they're hoping for. So. Well, they, they did sell this at town meeting, that they need this big building because they feel they're gonna have this expansion in the needs of the future. And I don't care, any, nobody has a crystal ball here saying 20 years or 30 years from now, is that boat going to be too small? Nobody here has that crystal ball. That's uh, pertaining to the standing sea metal roofs, and I recognize we, uh, as a community, selected metal roofs on a number of our, our municipal buildings. And we recommended that as a committee. I recognize the bylaw indicates it must be an asphalt roof. No. Uh, no. No horizontally no. seen roof. Bylaw <laughs> dictates that it must have the appearance of shingles. It could be right. any material right. you want in the world as long as it has the appearance of shingles. Can't think of another product that looks like shingles. Metal. Uh, metal, wood, wood, slate, wood. Metal tiles. Me metal. Yeah. The buildings that were replaced were metal roofs that looked like shingles. The, uh, the replacements were also replacements and not new construction. So there's a different rule for uh, renovation as long as it doesn't trigger a, there's a trigger point of if the renovations exceed more than a certain percentage of the value of the building, then full compliance with the overlay district is required. So the uh, public safety is outside the overlay district. Town Hall is within the overlay district, but it was a modification or renovation of existing structure. It didn't trigger the, uh, the requirements. I'm not sure about the uh, uh, Farm Museum. I think that has a metal seam roof too, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, we actually found that the Town Hall had a standing seam roof in the 1900s. We found a historic photograph, and that's why we recommended a vertical standing seam roof on that project, and we feel that it is appropriate for yeah. but such for a new, use. I understand it doesn't meet the zoning yeah. for, for new for new construction. It's not allowed in the overlay district. And if we were to want to change that bylaw, would the would the planning board support such a uh, an amendment to the bylaw? The but Bill said at the beginning of the meeting, the reason that the village overlay district is what it is was upon the recommendation working with the historical commission. From a planning board point of view, if 
the town wants to change it to something else, then you don't support that. I think you I, have to, I, you I, have to I, approve I, I, that. I'm not necessarily going to say we support, but I don't think we're going to have a big cardboard about saying no, no to it. You okay. know, if the bylaw wants to be changed, it's amended, and that's fine. Thank you. Just get the article to, to the uh, town, to the attorney yeah, town council, to the town administrator within the next couple of months. That's all. What's the date, Dave? David? David Dixon, what is the due date for the uh, amendments for, for articles for the town meeting? The uh, August 1st is when the okay. August 1st. Okay. I'm Carolyn Ennis. I'm at the 30 Green Leaf Drive. And I've only lived in Hadley for five years. But I've been coming to a lot of meetings. And I found out, I figured out, that you all know each other. But I don't know hardly anybody here except the people that live in my building. Would it be too much for you guys to have your names in front of you? Because I haven't a clue who you are. We do what our In a regular meeting in the Hooker School, the senior center, we have our we have our names. It, it's on it for the board. Mr. Sardins, Mike Sardinsky is on the end. John Richkowski. Oh, Mr. Jones up here. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't bring those names over here? Well, normally the TV5 has been bringing it, has been setting it up. I'm so, sorry. I should have done that. Okay, okay, so we will. Okay, yes, thank you. If, if when we meet here on the night on on, the, on the July, July, we'll have our names up. There. I appreciate it. Thank okay. you. I, I actually thought they were okay. I didn't notice. Okay, uh, Jim, real quick because I see you want to be done here by nine fifteen. Can you hold me to it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to say it was difficult. Um, the uh, about on the north side. Um, you talk about these projects fitting into Hadley's master plan, but I'm really concerned because once you jam these buildings into this small lot, then where do you go? You know, when people built this um, center of town, they thought about things and, and things were done right. We've got these beautiful older buildings, so for school one of them, which is unfortunately going to be demolished. Um, now we're looking at, at it, nice, this is nice, but I think that we really got to think about the future. We can't just say right now, as my husband spoke, our, our plan, uh, property is going to be for sale. I mean, um, there's a number of reasons why. It's, it's just time to downsize a little bit. And so uh, the, this is a great opportunity for the town to consider what's for the future. So we just want to say, if you want all the parking you need, all the green space you need, just be sure to consider that um, this this plan is not for the future. Go to the board of selection with that, with, with the with your property, because we have zero authority on that. I understand. Okay. So uh, I do have several comments that I have put together about uh, compliance, or rather non-compliance with the master plan because uh, the chairman did ask that the tonight's topic be limited to the zoning bylaw issues. Um, I did not raise them, but I'll bring those up at our next meeting. Okay. Right. Right. Quick question. Would it be possible to get those comments before next meeting? Right. Would it be possible to get those comments before next meeting so we can prepare our master plan? Correct. Um, yeah, but I don't want to go into them now, obviously. No, just no. understanding is we're going back and looking at all the comments that we've heard from the board tonight, at least so that we have an opportunity to address them before the July 7th yep. meeting. I'll, I'll, what, I'll give you two minutes to read them. That way it's part of the record, and you can distribute them. No comments, no comments, not just a direct reading of, com of Bill's comments. And then, would you mind forwarding them as well? Yeah, he'll give you, he'll give you an email on our summer. Thank you. Go ahead. So, um, I actually had a, a couple of uh, comments. Uh, master plan, page 3.1. A town center which is walkable, provides parking. Uh, this doesn't strike me as walkable. Uh, uh, walkable, attractive new village center. Uh, again, uh, this decision to place one building on the far end of the parcel and one on the near end of the parcel with a sea of asphalt in between. Uh, this is why it's not part of zoning. It's more stylistic comment, but it has all the, uh, uh, all the attractiveness of looking at Walmart from Route 9. Uh, 
enhance the town center as a livable, workable, and walkable community, create pedestrian network in and around the town center, uh, Future developments within the town center should be of the kind that enhances the characteristics of the center. It helps to create a livable, workable space. Basically, we spent a year and a half updating the master plan, and the first project out of the gate is a town project that seems to have been designed without reference to the master plan. So I'll ask the OPM, well, no, I'll save that for the next time, but my question for the OPM will be, did anyone crack the master plan and take a look at it? when you were doing the design work. It doesn't seem that way. The building where it's placed, the Legion no longer can park plow the snow to the north. You cannot plow to the uh, west. Who is going to haul their snow? Is the town going to be liable for that? Because they're going to be in the car carriage. Maybe you're going to look at that. Look at them. I was watching the Slackman's meeting a uh, few weeks ago. And uh, the OPM for the library came in with a change order for over $20,000. And it was described to the select board as necessary to comply with the planning board requests. Now, nothing we have requested of you is anything that we haven't requested of pretty much every developer as your attorney can testify. So I wonder how you budgeted the job such that you incurred an extra $20,000 in expenses to prepare yourself for a permitting hearing. And I guess this meeting is continued to July 715. 715, right here. David, could you please reserve this for us? Could we get a motion? Susan to wherever she lives, which is elsewhere. Elsewhere. Yeah. So we're we're paying for their drive home, basically. Yes. Right. As a, well, they're probably paying for the drive from Congress Street to here, and then from here to. Do home. we get any travel expense? N not for that. If you if you go someplace, you do. If you go to Congress, you can get travel expense. No, I mean just traveling around town. No. Oh. No. <laughs> so what is the amount? Three thousand six hundred eighty dollars and forty-eight cents. So moved. Got a motion? Yeah. Got a second? Yep. Motion second. All in favor? Three thousand six hundred eighty forty-eight. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Cool. 
And because I forgot to uh, bring the pay code for the last quarter for the last for the April, May, June quarter for us, I will entertain a motion to allow the chairman to sign the pays for the third for this quarter. I'll make a motion to authorize the chairman to sign pay vouchers. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Six. 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 Seventeen. Would it be appropriate for the next agenda to include specifically the, the uh, master plan and how this doesn't fit into I don't it? think we need to address it. Uh, it, it came up naturally within the context. The, 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 the next meeting we have is going to be this one. Because there's no meeting on July 3rd. So the next meeting is on 4th of July. I just didn't want to raise it during this meeting because... Let's have the meeting on 4th of July. Let's, let's really have some sparks. <laughs> we really have fireworks. Exactly. <laughs> Keep the party going. Let's show it down. We'll be right. Oh, Do you have anything else? I have nothing else. Anybody have anything else? Yeah. Can we buy some aspirins? I got a wicked head. has something. What? You got something, John? No. Yes. Question. Yes. The uh, Seniors Building Committee has a continued uh, hearing before us that is going to happen on Thursday. For what? This Thursday? Yes. Yes, it's okay. Concerning the roof. Yes. So the discussion that I heard today, I would say that that should be continued until you guys have had more time to review this project. That problem, I'm sorry, but it's not going to impact your vote. I mean, it, why are they appealing to you before we're going to vote? That's, that's what I said right along. It, it appears that once someone in the town hall doesn't like something with the Sony bylaws, they say, well, let's go to the CPA and get my way. But that's not the way it's done. Right. The way it's done is how I feel about it. I feel that you guys should get your uh, site plan approval definitively concluded, and then if there's any exceptions beyond that, they need to come to our board then we will deal with this. Someone yeah. had to bypass the process. Chris, and the town would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars for something that looks like it's a mistake. The other part of it is if we voted without the standing seal roof, I don't know what your variance is going to make a difference. Okay. Because that, you don't override us in that way. I mean, as the lawyer said, I watched the meeting, you, uh, you could say it was okay for them to do a standing seat, and then we could incorporate that in the second yeah, approval if we wanted to, if we thought we could. But you can't, they can't go to you to get a variance instead of appealing our decision. Uh, yeah, to but, ask that the, the, and the other thing is that I wasn't even aware, only through this meeting here, that there are steel roofs that are available that look like shingle roofs. Absolutely, I asked, I asked several builders, and they said yes. standing metal seam is common. But they absolutely make metal right. roofs that look like shingles. Terrible. Well, the uh, uh, the argument is that uh, they want to incorporate a solar project on the roof, which is, is a smart move. And I think it's a smart move to incorporate some form of steel roof if they're going to do that. But I, I talked to a couple of solar installers. And they did sugar to be adjourned. So yeah, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. Total all in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings history, thank you.